President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, on Sunday met with President Muhammadu Buhari on the increasing security challenges in the country. He told State House correspondents after the meeting that he believed in providing more resources for the nation's security agents and the need for the heads of the agencies to sit up or be shown the way out. The Senate had on June the 11th mandated the leadership of the National Assembly to urgently hold a meeting with the President on the nation's security challenges. The President of the Senate told journalists that the government must be ready to give a timeline to security chiefs over the nation's security challenges. He said the National Assembly was favorably disposed to receiving a supplementary budget specially designed to address the fundamental needs of the security agencies. And to discuss further on security challenges, we have joining us Kabir Adamu, who is a security risk management specialist. Good morning, Mr. Adamu. Uh, good morning, um, Amaka. Thank you for being with us this morning. Uh, let's go into the matter. Security risk management specialist, that's who you are, and you are also the managing uh, director of Beacon Consultant, uh, Consultancy. Thank you for joining us. But now to our matter, the constant call for change of service chiefs has been on for a while now. In your expert view, do you think this would improve the security situation in our country? Um, unfortunately, no, uh, even though it is the fact that individuals have a huge role to play in terms of the, their management style, how they are able to galvanize their staff and employee, employees to respond to whatever set objectives the organization have, in, in this case, the military. Um, my sincere opinion is that uh, it is the national security architecture and the national security strategy that are to blame for the circumstances, not so much the individuals. And what do I mean by, by this? Um, the military is just one component of the entire security architecture. At my last count, I counted 27 organizations, ministries, departments, and agencies that have a role to play um, in, in, in security in, in, in Nigeria. Now, out of these 27, only about five or well six, if you include the intelligence um, agencies, uh, are, are, are the military. All the others are non-military. And most of our security challenges are internal um, security matters. And frankly, those internal security matters are not military issues. Yes, um, the, our history, the misguided um, nature by which we use the military has allowed the military to be involved in internal security matters currently in Nigeria, but that is not the appropriate way. So um, in, in direct response to your question, I frankly do not think it's something to do with individual. I think we need to look closely at that, um, the national security architecture, and then of course, the national security strategy. I can talk a bit around the strategy. If you recall, in 2019, December specifically, the Buhari administration launched the revised National Security Strategy 2019. And in that document, we were promised that there's going to be a paradigm shift. Um, the state-centric approach to security that we've had from independence till, um, well, 2019, we were told that it would be changed to a um, human form of security where the citizen, you and I, would be the paramount consideration within in, in the security strategy. And under that, we had elements of health security, we had elements of food security, as well as social security and several other um, components of the modern day security. And we were told that that would be implemented. Unfortunately, um, a couple of months down the road from December to now, almost about seven months, six months, seven months, we've not seen um, the implementation of that document fully. Uh, the only aspect that I think they are attempting to, to implement is what they call the, the community policing component. Even then, um, the implementation is not 100%, um, unfortunately. Uh, well, a, a follow up to that, uh, whose duty is it to remind the government, you know, uh, the, you know, the president, say he has forgotten or those who are working with him to say, look, this is all that you have promised to give to us to deliver. But, you know, we've not seen it. And this is having, you know, the effect, the kind of negative effects that we are seeing in terms of the incessant killing, kidnapping, banditry, you know, security threats, Boko Haram and the rest. Well, um, 
you have, you have an example, the fourth estate of the realm. You, you, you are doing that rule by, by you know, airing this type of um, interviews. Uh, whether the presidency will listen to it is another, uh, you know, game thing entirely. The constitutional body that has that responsibility is the parliament uh, under our democracy, the oversight function by the legislature, um, is the, the best means to remind the presidency in some countries, perhaps even um, impeachment would have followed where people are being killed at the moment. So um, on the one hand, you have the citizen responsibility, which is uh, especially the, uh, the fourth realm of the, S the estate, then the CSO, civil society organizations, but the most effective one, frankly, is the legislature. And last week, we saw the president of the Senate visiting um, the, the, the president where he reminded him of this particular responsibility. And I recall him mentioning that he would want to see timelines and um, um, you know, uh, other indica indicators that would allow Nigerians to know that the security agencies are performing. Now, I agree with the Senate President entirely. One of the major weaknesses of our national security arch architecture and is the absence of monitoring and evaluation mechanisms within the security agencies. So if um, by that statement from the Senate president, it means going forward, we would now start seeing metrics for performance measurement within the security agencies. And also that would allow the parliament to increase their oversight function within the military, uh, within the security agencies. Sorry. So as an example, if when the IG of police was appointed, we were having 100 kidnapping incidents a month in Nigeria. And then two months down the road, we see a reduction to 10 kidnappings. Then we'll clap our hands for him. But if, for instance, we see an increase from 100 to, let's say, 200, then, frankly, what the Senate president is saying is the idea of police should go. And that's the type of legislative oversight I'm hoping to see going forward. Now, the, the, the president of the Senate uh, also mentioned that increasing funding and having a supplementary budget for security. Uh, but the question is, um, will giving more money solve the insecurity challenges we have now? Um, on the one hand, yes. On, and then the, on the other, no. And I'll explain what I mean. I know it sounds a bit odd that I'm using yes and no in the same sentence. Mm -hmm. um, so remember I said... Uh, our, our situation is, is really odd, where we have the military involved in internal security matters overwhelmingly. Um, so if we, if we allow the situation to remain and we pump money into the system, it would be tantamount of you trying to stop a, a, a leak on a bucket by just dropping the bucket on the floor. Uh, that would not stop the leak or, or putting water into a basket. That's how the, the money will waste. Um, however, if we change the situation immediately and, in, and enhance um, coordination and reduce overlap within these 27 agencies I mentioned at the beginning, um, then, and then add money in three specific areas with adequate legislative oversight in those three areas. One of them is to increase the employee, um, you know, uh, um, um, well, the, the, the number of employees within those, those organizations, all of them are stretched, really. Name, name one after the other, you find out that they are stretched. So increase uh, the number of employees they have. You need money to do that. Um, then the second one is to increase their equipment uh, disposal. Almost all of them require more equipment. And then the final one is technology. Uh, they all need technology. But all of this would be a waste if we do not um, reduce the overlap that is currently existing among them, and we do not um, enhance better coordination. In social science, we say the sum of the parts is greater than the whole. So that's what we need. We need better coordination. And in this regard, I'll put this responsibility squarely in the office of the National Security Advisor. He has probably the greatest coordination um, function within the national security architecture. There are others. Um, the Minister of Defense has some uh, coordination functions. The Minister of Police Affairs has coordination to an extent. The Minister of Interior has coordination. Then there are other two administrative heads, the Chief of Staff to the President, and then the Secretary to the Government of the Federation. They all have some elements of coordination, which is a, a bit fuzzy. Um, we need a constitutional change to delineate these coordination functions into a, a better stream 
and then perhaps that would reduce the type of um, friction that we are, where we saw, especially when Abakari was alive and some other um, in the past, the national security advisors. Okay. All right. Thank you so very much, Adamu, for your time. Unfortunately, we have to let you go now, but we'll bring you back for this conversation to continue. Do stay safe out there. Thank you, Amaka. And you to stay safe.